Christchurch, 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 Oh yeah. Hi everyone. Here's our Easter Explorer session. Welcome everybody. Happy Easter. First of all, let's start with a prayer. Dear Lord God, we thank you for Easter Sunday. Be with us now as we celebrate and thank you for what you did on that first Easter. I don't know if you remember what we did last time we met together in Explorer Hall. We started thinking about food that reminds us of Easter. We looked at the hot cross bun and we thought about the cross in the middle and how that reminds us that Jesus died for us on a cross. And then we turn the hot cross bun slightly sideways so you can see an X. And we said that reminds us of a little bit like a kiss on a card or a text message. And how that reminds us that Jesus was sent into the world because God loved each one of us. We also talked about the fruit in the bun and the yeast that we put into the recipe. And we talked about what they mean. I wonder if you can remember what we said the meaning was behind those two things. If you can, pause the video and tell someone at home. Later on, we thought about the bread and the wine and how Jesus broke the bread in two at that first last supper to remind his disciples that he was going to die on the cross and his body was going to be broken for us. He then poured the wine to remind his friends that when he died on that cross and spilled his blood for you and me, we will remember him. And we continue to remember that by taking communion, the bread and the wine, and remember Jesus until he comes again. Now today's Easter Sunday, and we're all thinking about, guess what? We're thinking about Easter eggs. Now this is my Easter egg. Now, I wonder, as I'm getting this egg out of the box, whether you can tell someone at home what Easter eggs remind us of. Okay, here we go. Pause the tape if you need to. Welcome back everybody. You are right. Eggs remind us of a little chick. Can you see this little chick in my hand? And a chick reminds us of new life. The new life that Jesus gave to us when he came alive again on that first Easter Sunday. Now there's something else that Easter eggs remind us. If I take it out here, I've got, unfortunately this is broken slightly, I've got two halves and we sometimes say that the half of the egg reminds us of the stone that rolled away when Jesus came alive again. And also, my egg is completely empty. Jesus is no longer dead in that tomb. He has come alive again. So we're thinking a lot about eggs today. Now, let's think about our story today. Our story is about how some people in our story felt sad one moment and then suddenly they were happy. Now that happens to us sometimes, I think. Sometimes we feel very sad. We might be, say, playing in a football or a hockey match and we're doing really, really badly. And then in the last minutes of the match, we start winning and wave. Look, we're happy. We suddenly change. Now, I also think we've had those feelings in the last few weeks. We felt a bit fed up and sad when we've realised 
that we need to stay at home, that we're not going to meet up with our friends. But then something has happened at home. Maybe we've done a fun activity together, had some fun in the garden, or maybe we've even been able to FaceTime a friend and suddenly we feel happy. Now that's what the Easter story is all about, really. Those disciples were really sad. They lost their best friend, the king who was going to come and set his people free. And then suddenly Jesus came alive again and they realised all along what Jesus had come to do to set people free, to take the bad things in the world away, to overcome the power of evil. Now, our story today is not about when the women went to the tomb or even when the disciple Peter went to the tomb. It's a different story, but happened very shortly after those two. Now, our story is found in Luke chapter 24, verses 13 to 35. Now, in Explorers, sometimes what we do is have a race to see who can find the passage the fastest. I want you to pause the tape, see if you can find your Bibles, and I'll welcome you back in a couple of minutes. Welcome back everybody. Have you got those Bibles ready? Right, I'm going to count you in. Are you ready? Steady, go. Who's going to be the quickest in your house to find the passage? Well done. I don't know who it, who it was, but well done whoever was first. The story is called The Road to Emmaus. And it's about two people mostly on the, that journey. They're leaving Jerusalem and they're walking home to Emmaus. That journey is 11 kilometers. Now, there are various things that happen on that journey. But if you're going to do the activity I want you to, you are going to have to find the attached PDF with six pictures on it. It looks like this, okay? Six pictures. Now, I want you to pause the tape just while you cut them out. Well done, everybody. Welcome back. Now, I'm going to tell the story. And when we get to the part of the story that you think your a picture is to do with, I want you to hold it up. And you can show everyone at home and see if you have got the right picture. Right. Cleophas and his friend were very, very sad. It was a very long journey from Jerusalem to Emmaus. They'd received some very sad news. They'd lost their friend Jesus. And they were walking back and they were feeling really sad. Now they'd heard the news from the women that Jesus was alive, that they, these women had seen the empty tomb. They'd met the angels who said Jesus is alive. But Cleophas and his friends were really confused. They were really sad. Now, a little way along the road, the journey, a man approached them and joined them and asked them, what are you talking about? They looked at the man confused and said, haven't you heard the terrible news? Our friend Jesus was crucified on a cross by the Romans. We lost him. We then heard from some women that... Um, Jesus had come alive again. They'd seen him. The tomb was empty. And they said Jesus is alive. But we can't believe it. We're so confused. Now the man who joined them was actually Jesus. But they didn't recognise Jesus. He turned to them and said, Why are you so slow to believe? This man then continued to explain to them all of the writings in the Old Testament, 
all of the things that have been written down and spoken hundreds of years before Jesus was born. And he explained that in order for the Jewish people to be set free, Jesus had to come to earth to teach people, to show them what God was like, but also he had to die for them. He had to take the bad things everybody had done away. And he had to come to bring them new life. And to do that, he had to die and rise again from the dead a few days later. Jesus turned to the men and said, don't you remember how Jesus told you he had to die? But then he would come alive again. The men's expressions on their faces changed from confusion into absolute joy. They got it. They realised Jesus really was alive. The women had told the truth. They were pleased and excited. Suddenly they realised they were just coming home to their house. They turned to Jesus, who they still did not recognise, and said, would you like to come into our house for a meal? Jesus did. He sat down with the men and had food. But then something amazing happened. Jesus, in front of them, took the bread, broke it and said thanks. It was at that point they realised who Jesus was. They'd seen him do that before in the Last Supper. They were eating with Jesus. He was alive. The men were so excited. They couldn't wait a second. They ran this time all the way back to Jerusalem. They wanted to tell everyone the good news. I wonder, did you hold up the right piece of paper at the right time? Did you get your pictures right? Now you'll notice looking at your pictures, it goes 1A, 1B. And if you look at the passage, can you see in 1A, the guys are looking really, really sad because they think they've lost their friend Jesus. And then in 1B, they are running all the way back to Jerusalem, excited with the news that Jesus is alive. Let's look at 2A. Can you see? They are confused. But they're beginning to work out that Jesus needed to die and then come alive again. And in 2B, they are so excited because they realise the person they've been walking with all the time was Jesus himself. And then if we look at 3A, we can see where Jesus is saying, you were so, you were so slow to believe. And then suddenly we see the joy on their faces as they really do believe. Okay, now that was a great story and it reminded us of how at Easter, those first, that first Easter, everyone changed from being, losing all hope to being full of joy. Now, I've thought of a few activities that you could be getting on with at home. Now, the first of these activities is a bit of cooking. Now, I had a go at these. These are Easter biscuits. Now, most of these ingredients, hopefully, you've got in the house, okay? Now, all you need to do it is you need a bowl with a wooden spoon and uh, a whisk. You'll also need a set of scales. But above that, you just need the ingredients on your sheet. You're going to need some flour, some spices, butter, sugar, currants and two beaten eggs. Now, I had a go at this and it wasn't too hard. And here are my biscuits. And because Easter is springtime, we're thinking about new life. I cut them out in the shape of flowers. Now, I know some of you might be thinking, ooh, I don't want to put currants in mine. Well, if you really don't, leave out the spice. And anyway, we might not all have the spices at home. And use some little bits of chocolate chip or smarty bits or something to put in your biscuits. Now, so you can have a go at that. Now, the recipe is attached to the video link. 
so you can actually download that really easily. Now, there was another thing. We've been talking about eggs, haven't we? Here's my Easter egg. And uh, we were thinking about eggs. Now, eggs are a little bit hard to come by. But if you do get hold of some eggs, what you can do is I actually save some of our shells and I wash them out. I had some brown eggs and some white eggs. And then I broke them up into small pieces like this. Can you see on the plate? I've got broken pieces of brown shell. Now then I took some paint and I painted my shell in different colours. I think there were two different types of blue and there was a green as well. And I decided to create a picture out of the broken pieces. Now here's my picture, okay? It's a picture of a cross and sitting on a very, very small hill. But now in order to stick it down, you have to squash the eggshell a little bit and it's made up of broken pieces of egg. And it reminds us that Jesus died for each one of us on the cross. But it was really fun to do. And also I thought it reminded us a little bit, well, because the, from the broken eggs, that Jesus's body had to be broken for us on that cross in order for us to have new life. But also in a way, we can often feel like broken people and Jesus came to heal us, to make us better. So this is a really good reminder of what Jesus came to do. Now I'm sure you'll choose one of those creative activities to do. Maybe it's the biscuits or making um, a design of your own out of broken eggshells. But you know how I love a Bible challenge. Well, I've got the last sheet I attached for you was this, okay? It says on the top, Easter Notice Board. And it involves looking up some verses in the Old Testament and seeing how those verses actually predicted or actually foretold what was actually going to happen at that first Easter. Um, some of them are really, really well-known stories or verses. Why don't you have a go at the Bible challenge? I promise I won't forget. And if you bring it in, I can guarantee a prize when we all come back together again. Okay, so we've been thinking about Easter and about how our eggs remind us of new life. I'm going to go in a minute, but what I'd like us to do is just finish with a prayer. So let's put our hands together. Dear Lord God, we thank you that you came, that you sent your son Jesus to die for each one of us on that first Good Friday. We thank you that he then rose again from the dead on Easter Sunday, that he showed us that he has great power, power over evil, power over death, and above all, that we need never fear that we always have Jesus by our side, because he's alive today and every day. In your name. Amen. Well, I hope it won't be too long before we meet again. Happy Easter, everyone. Christchurch, 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 Christchur